I'ma keep it a bean. Stick to the script every scene. These from last year, but they clean. Say to say, I'ma take some else, but it's winning team. Charlie Sheen, fam gang, the regime. I'm from Piney Green. It's been overdue forever. forever. Ask me when it was dropping, said never. Never. Should've made you cut the feather. But I designed it Freemason Margella. What's good, Shell? Try to hear the most spoke, no joke, and I'm back, back. Back out again with a brand new video, and today I want to talk about a quote that I think we've all heard by this point. A quote from GM Marty Herney that has me thinking, you know, maybe you might have a point, but it also brings up a lot of questions that I think he needs to answer before going this far, before making this kind of leap. But real quick before I get into all that, I've been getting told by a lot of subscribers, people didn't send me messages, comments, uh, DMs and whatnot, people have been telling me that they have not been getting notifications about my videos. People said that they haven't been seeing it in their sub box. They haven't been seeing it on their suggested list or on their front page of their YouTube. Look, I just found out very recently that YouTube changed the way the subscriptions work. Again, they've changed it a lot, honestly. It's kind of hard to keep up with all the changes they make. But basically what they've done is that they've made it so that they don't always tell all subscribers of a channel when that channel makes the video, when they're updating the content, when they're doing posts and whatnot. So the best way to actually make your subscription work for right now is to actually hit the notification bell. And that's the best way to make sure you're always up to date and you know when I drop content. I guess you could always just check my channel every day because I usually upload every single day. And if not every day, it's every other day. But that's just how it is right now, man. Anyway, the quote of him saying, I think the guy everybody is forgetting is Rashawn Golden when he was asked about, you know, what the situation is with the free safeties, what the team's looking at with the slot corner situation and whatnot. And that would be a very fair statement to make if there was literally anybody who'd forgotten about Rashawn Golden. I don't think any fan of the team has forgotten about our third round pick from just last year. In fact, I think everyone remembers Rashawn Golden, and that's the main reason why there are so many questions. I mean, look, this isn't really the channel for it, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys some life advice here that you can live by. And this is some primo content here, so get your notebooks out. If there's something very important to you, and there's someone who keeps forgetting that thing that's very important to you, it's really a two-step process to get them to remember it. One, you remind them of that thing, and two, you give them a very good reason to remember that thing. Going through those two steps can help you out in a lot of different situations in your life, one in big particular, but right here, and if Marty Herney truly believes that people have forgotten about with Sean Golden, all he had and all he has to say is this one sentence. The free safety spot is Rashawn Golden's to lose this offseason. Make it 100% clear that the guy you drafted just last year in the third round is not still just a project guy. I mean, he has the quote here talking about Rashawn Golden. He, he, he looks really good to be in contention to like compete for the starting role at free safety. Compete for the starting role at free safety? Looking at our roster here, man, looking at our, our, our 490 man roster, if our third round pick from last year can't beat out Quinn Blanding and Kai Nakua, UDFAs, I mean, who else is who else is back there? Damian Parms, he's a strong safety. I mean, I'm kind of confused as to it. Can we not just say that it's his job to lose yet? I mean, are, are we are we really in that situation where we have to say, well, you know, you never know at free safety. I mean, he he could have the role there, but he's got to beat out these guys that weren't even drafted. These guys that were like second, third afterthoughts for us when we drafted him in the third round just last year. He was a slot corner, which is another hole in the defense that we have. And getting off on a tangent here, wasn't there a quote just last week with the team talking about Rashawn Golden also competing for the slot corner role? I'm, I'm kind of confused. So in this offseason, he's going to be splitting time between fighting for the free safety role or fighting for the slot corner role. I mean, what's going to be the bigger priority here? Is it like if he plays best at free safety, we're going to find someone else for slot corner? Or if he plays best at slot corner, we're going to find someone else for free safety? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of confused as to what his priority is going to be. How's he going to split his time and actually get the right coaching for either one particularly? I'm a little bit confused about that. And I think what the issue here, I, that I, just, I guess that Marty Herney doesn't really get right here, is that it's not that fans have forgotten about Rashawn Golden. It's really easy to forget about something you're never told about. Now, I know being told this will be competition, but I'm sorry, bro. I, I, I look, <laughs> if our third round pick from last year can't beat out UDFAs, that's a problem. And honestly, it's a problem that our team won't even come out and say or have the confidence in our third round pick from last year to just say, hey, he's going to probably be our guy this year. We still have to see, but they won't even say that he's probably going to be the guy. It's always been, there's going to be competition. And I know it's kind of a nuance there, but I would like to see a little bit of confidence from the team to say, this is going to be his spot unless he loses it. 
I'm very confused as to what's going on here. And honestly, I have reason to be. This isn't like some kind of like overreaction or whatever. I mean, Rashawn Gallman played in 15 games last season and had 17 combined tackles. That's not good. One total pass defended. That is not all that great. And there was another quote in that in, in that interview there that really got me. That it, it, it really it really hit me the wrong way. Marty Herney actually said, and I quote, "We knew he was going to be a project when we drafted him in the third round because he played mostly nickel at Tennessee. But you look at that New Orleans game; he flashed. He did some good things. I think we feel good about him." Let's talk about that. That New Orleans Saints game he's talking about was the December 30th game, our second matchup with the Saints in three weeks. And let's talk about how he flashed. We'll start off with his stats. Before I get into him, I want to mention that, you know, stats aren't everything, but stats are something. In that New Orleans game where he flashed, his official stat line was three combined tackles, one pass defended. Three combined tackles, one pass defended. Now, put that into, uh, into context here. Colin Jones, who I think we all have a pretty similar opinion of, in that game versus the New Orleans Saints, Colin Jones had one tackle, one pass defended, and an interception. Did he flash greatness in that game? And let's get even deeper in the context of that game there. That last New Orleans Saints game, the quarterback wasn't Drew Brees. That was basically a preseason game. We went against Teddy Bridgewater. If you look at Teddy Bridgewater's stats, or at least his completion percent, it looks pretty all right. He threw 14 for 22, which looks good. But, I mean, 5.4 average, that's not great at all. And if you actually watch that game, you would see that Teddy Bridgewater looked horrible. He looked shook. Look, man, first of all, that game was just a bad game in general. The Saints were trying to lose that game. They had no reason to even want to win that game. They had all backups in. It was literally a preseason game. We had our backups in. Their backups were in. Teddy Bridgewater was missing Michael Thomas. And there was only two people on that Saints team who actually cared about that game. The first was Michael Thomas because he only needed like 17 or 14 yards to actually break the 1,400-yard mark and get the single-season receiving record for the Saints. So he wanted to get those yards and get them in. He actually did not get those yards until into the fourth quarter. 17 yards into the fourth quarter, that's not good at all. And the other person was the guy actually throwing it to Michael Thomas. Teddy Bridgewater had a lot of reason to want to look good in that game. That was his only start of the season. He wanted other teams to see that he was still Teddy Bridgewater. He could still play. He could still produce at the highest level and probably get a starting job somewhere. He did not do that. A QBR of 43.1. He had one touchdown, one interception. That one interception was Cullen Jones. Keep that in mind. So what you're telling me is that Rashawn Gordon flashed in a game where he had objectively worse stats than Cullen Jones against a backup quarterback who was missing passes uh, to Michael Thomas, of all people, who was wide open on a lot of those passes, by the way. And that's how we're going to judge a player's readiness to be a starter on this team. Keep in mind, he couldn't be on a 38-year-old Mike Adams for free safety. I think a lot of fans had a problem with Mike Adams last year. I think he had a pretty decent year. I mean, he had a good year for being a 38-year-old. He wasn't as bad as a lot of people thought he was going to be. I actually liked Mike Adams last year. I wouldn't bring him back. He's very old, but still, I like what he did for us. But let's keep it real. If Rashawn Golden showed the skills that he would be better than Mike Adams last year, he would have gotten in the games. He would have gotten a lot more snaps last year than he did. And I'm sorry, I, I really can't use the Week 17 Saints game as anything more than a preseason game. That was our fifth preseason game of the year. I, I, I don't respect what happened in that game at all. I'm not saying that Rashawn Golden is bad. I'm not saying that he can't produce. I'm not saying that he can't progress as a player. I'm just saying it's very, very disingenuous to use that Week 17 game going up against all backups as any kind of indication as to whether or not we can say he's going to be a starter level player when even the GM himself is not even saying he's a starter level player. He's saying he can compete against UDFAs to be a starter player. That's not the kind of confidence you want to exude when you're talking about a former third round pick from just this past season and you're talking about your fan base for getting about a guy. You're not really giving the fan base a lot of reason to remember the name. Rashawn Golden played in, I think, 147 snaps on defense, which came out to be 14% of all defensive snaps last year. He played 60 more snaps than Jermaine Carter, and I think only two less snaps than David Mayo. That's a pretty healthy amount of snaps. It wasn't the biggest amount, but let's be real here. He got a, a, a decent chunk of, of the snap counts. I think he was 19th ranked on the team for a percentage of snaps played on defense. Not the highest, but definitely, I think, enough to where you can see something. And look, 147 snaps 
and only 17 combined tackles is not really what I, I I don't know. And it was actually 14 combined tackles before week 17. So, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to say it. I mean, one-fifth of his tackles came in the last week of the year, and it was against a, a scout team, basically, for the Saints. I don't want to get too negative, because I actually do believe that Rashawn Golden can be a pretty good part of our team. I think he can progress. I think he can be the player that we all hope he can be. But the quote right here from Marty Herney, who's been doing a crazy, uh, impressive job this offseason. This is probably his first misstep of the whole offseason. These quotes here about Rashawn Golden are just extremely disingenuous and kind of, I would say, a little bit insulting to the fan base to say those kind of things. And then he ends it off by saying, you know, we're always looking to find guys to uh, improve our team and whatnot. I would not be surprised if we do pick up a guy. I mean, there was a time, a very long time ago, just last year, where Ron Rivera said that he was going to give Cameron Artis Payne a fair shot to be the backup to Christian McCaffrey. Then he went out and signed Shady Anderson. And then this past season, we signed Cap again. And then we go out and draft a running back in the fifth and then pick up another guy who's a UDFA. So there's two more running backs on the team. And it's not like it's draft time right now. It's not the early part of the free agency period. So we're not like doing any more smoke screens. It's a little bit strange to say this when all you have to do to make everyone stop talking is show a little confidence in Rashawn Golden. That's all you have to do. Show a little confidence and say, this is his job unless he loses it. And they haven't yet. That's how I feel about it. How do you feel about it, man? Do you like Rashawn Golden? Do you not? Do you see anything from last year that really flashed you to make you think that, you know what? This guy can be a starter free safety in the NFC South. Do you think the team's going to actually sign another free safety to come in and maybe compete with Rashawn Golden? Do you think it's going to be a guy who's going to actually be the starter? And one last thing, if you did the contact here and you want to show some support, go down to the pinned comment below. Go to the petition there and sign it. It takes all of 10 seconds. And we can maybe get the Panthers to partner with this channel. I can bring a lot bigger content, a lot better content, a lot deeper content. I'd appreciate it a lot. And we're actually almost at 600 signatures in just, I think, under a month or just about a month. So y'all been going crazy with the support so far, man. See if we can get to 1,000, man. That'd be wild. Crazy wild. I got caught between the two words there. And anyway, as always, you already know to do that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.